Toyota are, in, are testing out swappable hydrogen batteries. Mercedes and AMG are building an F1 car for the road. Volkswagen are on stories to do with diesel gate and TikTok. Skoda has sorted out the harness problems and an online booking system for independent garages. My name is Paul Callan. Hello and welcome to this week's Motors End News. a story about the motorcycle manufacturers in Japan producing interchangeable batteries. Well Toyota are just after putting out some information about swappable hydrogen modules. So it's, it's basically a tank of hydrogen that is interchangeable and swappable. Um, so it can and they're suggesting that it can be used on either a fuel cell vehicle or it can be used on an internal combustion engine vehicle that's using hydrogen. They're not saying one or the other. They're just saying that this is a, a, an option that they're going to start to, they actually are starting to develop it in Japan. Also in Japan, they're offering now a storage battery. A sto so it's a storage battery for your house. So you can buy a battery from Toyota. Uh, it, it has a max of 5.5 kilowatt output for your house it weighs 142 kilos and it can link with your solar panels but it can also link with your plug-in electric vehicle so this battery can be charged by solar to run your house or charge that's in your car can be taken from your car to run the house and some of the stuff around this is going to be the use of off-peak electricity as well so using off-peak electricity to charge these batteries but this is not the first time I've seen this. Tesla have had bought a solar company in America a couple of years ago because all this is the second time I've seen it now. So the car brands are suggesting that the car and the car battery was going to be integrated with the house and with the energy generation systems in the house. Uh, so you're going to have this close link between the car and the house. AMG, the performance wing of Mercedes, Turn the sod on its building in Germany on the 1st of June 1967 for the start of the company. So the company is celebrating 55 years this year. And to celebrate that, Mercedes are launching an F1, basically an F1 road car. So it's a road car with all the F1 technology on it. It's using the F1 hybrid system from the race car. It's using the motors it's using the engine from the race car it's it's using a carbon fiber monocoque um, it's got an active aero system it's got push rod suspension and it's also got a load bearing engine and gearbox so the engine and gearbox as in a formula one car make up part of the chassis this car is going to produce a thousand brake horsepower between the four drive motors and the engine um, and it's going to do a max of 352 kilometers per hour. So the car is actually manufactured. It's there. It's going to be at the Festival Goodwood of Speed, uh, Festival of Speed at Goodwood, uh, and it's going to do the hill climb there on the end of the month at that event. Volkswagen are offering the all-wheel drive option now with the ID4. So they're going to have a dual motor ID4, 194 kilowatts uh, of power, 260 brake horsepower. 77 kilowatt output motor so they're saying that that vehicle can do 517 kilometers on one charger 321 miles so again range anxiety you know is no longer an issue here because they seem to be getting sufficient mileage out of these vehicles or kilometers out of them per charge that people shouldn't be overly worried about about the range on them volkswagen are also this week talking about a concept of recycling batteries multiple times so they're saying is that they're going to be able to recycle and recycle and recycle and they're not saying how many times but they're saying they, they, again this wording that's been used is closed loop material system so they're all coming up with this idea of closed loop that the material always gets reused so they're saying they're going to be able to capture the most valuable components like um, 
graphite cathode materials or electrolyte in that battery and reuse it but not saying how many times they can reuse it. We're staying with Volkswagen and the two opposite stories here now really showing the journey that Volkswagen have gone in the last seven years but one story that just came out last week was that Volkswagen have reached an out-of-court settlement in regard to Dieselgate, the, the illegal software that they had on the vehicles that showed up in 2015. They've, they've, they've reached an out-of-court settlement with people in England and Wales. cost them £193 million. It was a six-month trial. There was 91,000 claimants. Uh, at the time, diesel was the most popular fuel type in Europe. This was, of course, discovered in America by the EPA in America, and the bill in America at the moment is standing at around $30 billion. But another complete opposite situation now that Volkswagen find themselves in seven years later, and I make the claim that, you know, the, the reason that we're so far down the road of electric is partly due to Dieselgate. And this story coming from Volkswagen this week is that they've launched a TikTok channel, and they're calling it New Auto. And this channel is designed to communicate and connect with the digitally, environmentally conscious Gen Z. And you're saying, what the hell is he talking about? Gen Z is, is the age group that were born between 1997 and 2012. And Volkswagen are saying that we're, we're introducing this format in, or, in order to communicate with those people. They're going to be talking about decarbonisation. They're going to be talking about circular economy. They're going to be talking about autonomous driving. They're saying that, that right now we're experiencing the biggest transformation in automotive history. And they are reaching out to this target audience to try and communicate with them in regard to all the good things they're doing for the environment. And seven years ago was Dieselgate. So it goes to show you the journey we've come and it goes to show you how much a company can change. And I sometimes use that now as an example to say, look, this is how much Volkswagen are changing. We also have to change in the aftermarket in conjunction with, it, with this rate of change also. Staying with Volkswagen Group, Skoda have had massive issues with um, delivery of vehicles, production problems due to harness issues because Volks Skoda had a lot of their harnesses that were being produced in Ukraine. And when the war started, Skoda have had very few or little or no of their electric vehicles in production from the 3rd of March for eight weeks. They had no electric vehicle production. While they're after transferring some of the harness production from Ukraine to the Czech Republic, and they're also getting additional capacity in Morocco. So they're now saying that they're going to be able to get their vehicle productions back online. But I know speaking to a lot of Skoda dealers around the country, they were thinking that it's January, February before they'll have stock of vehicles. Um, hopefully in the next couple of weeks, going to bring you some footage and some stuff that we did because we were out on a promo tech out in Bologna and we were also, also um, did some filming there and we're going to talk about some topics that, that we hit upon out there. Um, one of the things that I came across was a company doing software that was allowing independents to have an online booking system on their website. And I spoke to a couple of independent garages that were using this system. And I asked them about, you know, what, how did they see it? Or was it working? Or did they see benefits on it? A couple of them were, had it worked out that they were getting four jobs a day on that system that were booked in. So someone comes home, they're sitting down watching TV tonight. It's an ad break. They know the car needs servicing, so they want to get it booked in. So they go online, they get onto your website. You have an online booking service there. Calendar comes up, they pick a date, they pick a time, and they slot it in. The one person I spoke to said if they didn't have their website operating at the level that it is, they reckon it would be 25% of their business that, that they wouldn't get. So it's something that I think in the aftermarket independent sector we need to start to look at as well because. Most of the dealers now have this built into their websites as part of the manufacture of the franchise program. So it's some, all of these type of things are products and services that as independent aftermarket workshops, we have to look at what the franchise dealers are doing and try and match them. So there are some companies out there now, but in the next couple of weeks, we're going to bring you little snippets of, of things that we've seen 
at the show in Bologna at Auto Promotech that we feel might be of a little bit of interest or help to you. That was this week's show. Please, if you could, like, comment and subscribe and talk to you next week.